Hey everyone, I've never made a video quite like this before, but something was changed in yesterday's update to TF2 that I firmly believe to be a huge problem, so I have to speak up about it in hopes that others understand why this one change can potentially ruin a major mode in this game, Man vs. Machine. In yesterday's TF2 update, the ability to inspect a person's loadout in MVM was restricted to only party members and those on your friends list. It was obvious upon inspection that this change was made as a result of toxic players from that game mode, specifically to combat Tacobot.tf, a notorious group known to trash talk players who don't play the game exactly how they want to, or at the very least, offering advice to players who generally have bad upgrades with a toxic and rude demeanor, compared to me who offer the same advice, but in a much more constructive way. The issue with this change can be broken down into the following points of interest. Number 1. Not being able to simply check on someone's upgrades, and then decide if you want to reach out to them to share advice on what you feel would be a better set of upgrades, will cause for people to leave games more often, leading to many queues resulting in dead lobbies. Not everyone speaks the same language, not everyone has good microphones for communication, and it would be awkward for any person to ask everyone in their team what their upgrades are. Players now have to pay attention to how their team is doing a lot more, and therefore put a lot more trust into their team that isn't completely earned. Number 2. Many people, myself included, play Tour of Duty, which is something you have to pay to play. As such, we should have the courtesy to know what our other teammates are doing. Some people like to play Tour of Duty casually and not care so much about their team, but others like to play in a team that they don't have to worry about, a team which won't fail a wave over and over. Some people like being efficient, and enjoy playing a solid, quick game that is satisfying to complete. Additionally, there are some upgrades that are simply broken and do not work, which low tour players will never know unless explained to, which would only happen if a person sees that they got such an upgrade. For instance, the second and third tick of minigun firing speed does not actually increase firing speed. It's not until the fourth tick of the upgrade in which the effect of ticks 2 and 3 are also applied. Number 3. Simply put, this change will not actually stop toxic players from being toxic. People from Tacobot will be able to tell from the first wave if a player isn't doing what they want them to do. It will only cause them to shit on low tours under the assumption that they are incompetent, which will drive people away from playing MVM. They will simply requeue until they play with the team that fits their specifications, and high tours in general will probably do the same, though to a less hostile extent. This will ultimately leave the low tours to fend for themselves, playing without the help of people like me who have the experience in the game mode and are willing to at least help them out before finding a better team. A friend of mine from MVM had a talk with me about this situation, and I wanted to include his thoughts in this video. It's just, it's just stupid. Like, okay, so here's the thing I'm getting at, right? I tours are going to take the path of least resistance. That's always what they're going to do. And you have two groups, right? So you have the first group of high tours who believe the path of least resistance is if you see a group and there's a shitload of low tours, you just get the fuck out of there. Because it's not even worth checking their upgrades, even seeing. Just looking at those numbers is enough to tell them to just leave, right? And then you have the second group of people. This is what I fall under. This is what you fall under. Is you go into the group and you see that there are a bunch of low tours, but you give... You spend 30 seconds looking at what they do. You spend like, hey, how did they spend their upgrades? And if you find out that even if they're low tours, all of them still are getting the right upgrades, they're using the right weapons, they're playing the right classes, they got the right team comps going, they're not idiots. Then that is an incentive for those high tour players to stick around and help those new players get better at the game. The problem is now you completely remove that. You completely remove the ability for high tour players to, to look at low tour players loadouts and upgrades and determine whether or not they are worth playing with just simply based off of those looks. So what this will do is now this creates a situation where if you want to find out whether or not those low tours are actually good at playing the game, you can't just get a quick summary of their upgrades and then determine yes or no. You can't you can't do that anymore. Now you have to play wave one with them and divert your attention for what you're doing at the moment, you know, your class's job and actually look at what they're doing and see if they're doing their job correctly. And most people don't want to do that. They don't want to multitask that much. They just want to do their job. And they don't want to waste 10 minutes finding out if a group of players is worth playing with. So what's going to happen? They're just going to leave. And you can't check based off the competency of their players based off their upgrades. You only leave it to the tour count. So what's going to happen? Low tours are going to be generalized as bad players. High tours are going to be generalized as good players. And if you see a low number, you're just going to automatically leave. Doesn't matter if you got the right upgrades or anything. Okay, this is absolutely stupid.
This is, like, this is one of the dumbest changes they've ever made. They, they're doing it to stop toxicity. It's not going to fix a damn thing. Like, okay, let's say someone, zero tours, joins the game. How do I know whether or not they can play the gamer? Because before, it's like, you can look at someone's upgrades, and that tells you a lot. Because if you get the right upgrades, it's like, shit, you know what you're doing. You got the right upgrades, you're, you're checking for the resistances on the top of what mobs spawn that wave, and you're buying resistances accordingly. That's great. So, for example, if you're a heavy, right? If you're not using the Natasha or the Tommy Slav, that's like your best bet. All right, you can't check their upgrades, so your best bet is... Are you using one of those two miniguns that are trash in MVM? And I don't know if that'll be enough for most people. I don't know if saying, oh, you check that box of not using those shitty min or miniguns, fine, you're you're a good heavy. I don't think people are going to do that, because that could just be like a personal preference. Does he have knockback rage? Yeah, ex exactly. You're not going to know that he got knockback rage. You're not going to know... For those unaware, knockback rage makes you push robots further away with your minigun bullets, but as a result, due to damage fall off, causes you to do less damage since they're further away from you. Yeah, a lot of, but a lot of low tours like using it. It's just you know, because it's like fun to push shit back. The big thing is it doesn't solve the problem that they're trying to solve. It, all it's going to do is divide the player base even more. It's going to make people like me who would all the time solo queue because I like giving low tours a chance because not all of them are shitty. A lot of them are, but some of them are good. Some of them are fine to play with. And what you'll find now is I don't want to, I don't want to queue with these people because I can't instantly tell whether or not someone's good or bad at the game. Or I can't instantly get a general idea. And just to be clear, this is not saying that low tours are the problem because everybody starts at tour number zero. Everybody gets helped from people that have more experience and are not toxic and actually want to help people who they believe will take their advice and run with it. But this simply does not allow for that anymore. This does not allow for somebody to easily suggest their recommendations for upgrades. And if you encounter a toxic person, you can just leave. It's not a personal thing at all. It's just, I like being competent. I like playing with competent people. So therefore, I will play with people who best fit that role of competency in which I am expecting and hoping for. And now, I think most people are like that. I think the vast majority of people who have gone, who have got out of the learning phase of MBM, want to play with people who aren't really in that learning phase. Or if they are in that learning phase, you can teach them. You can give them a general idea of what to do. It's like if you're spending your upgrades, if you're spending your money in a bad way, if you're buying health regen on heavy, which is absolutely fucking useless, but some low tour players do that, you can't tell them anymore. You can't say, hey, uh, low tour heavy, that upgrade is absolute dog shit. You can't do it. And the best part is, right, when that shit would happen to you, when you had one tour or zero tours and you bought a dumb upgrade, and then someone called you out and said that upgrade is trash, that's stuck with you forever. You're like, oh shit, metal regen on NG actually isn't good? Okay, great, thank you for telling me, never use it again. Uh, fire, the second and third tick of firing speed on that on the minigun doesn't work. Oh, thank you for telling me. Never using that again. The third tick of sentry firing speed doesn't work at all, and the second tick only works with the Wrangler. Great, thanks for telling me. I will prioritize that less and not buy the third one at all. But you can't do that anymore. Now you can't offer those pieces of advice to new players or even high-level players who didn't know that stuff because the game's just fucking broken. You, you can't do that anymore. And that is such a big problem. Because now people are going to be stuck in their ignorance. They're going to be, like, surrounded by it. They, and they won't be able to break it. No one will be able to help break them out of it. They need to set out on their own journey to find resources that will break them out of it. And a lot of people aren't that self-motivated. They just want to play a goddamn game without looking up guides all the goddamn time. This update was not needed. They already solved this problem slightly when they removed the timer being reset when you tried to retry and re-enter the game. If you encounter a toxic person, they'll make themselves known immediately, especially if they're from Taco Bot. If they see upgrades that they don't like, they will either leave and then you'll just requeue, or they'll complain about it and then it's up to you if you want to requeue. They will make it apparent whether or not they're toxic from wave one, you don't have to wait until wave six to find that out. And you can determine if you want to stay or not at that point. So this update is meddling with the core fundamentals of MVM, which is teamwork and communication. I 
no longer have the ability to really communicate with my team in terms of offering advice and offering tips and tricks that I and other high tours have discovered from playing this game mode hundreds of times. Yeah, I, I think the uh, thing with Taco Bot is obviously you don't want to glorify their behavior because the vast majority of them are absolute scumbags and their entire foundation is predicated on not even giving not giving the slightest amount of charitability or credibility to these people who are completely new. But the problem is, now we can't either. We can't do that. The, the shit that Taco Bot would do when they had the chance to be better, we don't have the chance to be better anymore. And at this point, it's if you can't beat them, join them. Like, our, our strategy of wanting to be helpful and resourceful, but also wanting to be competent, achieving that just it doesn't happen anymore. You can't do that with efficiency. So the number one thing that we can do to improve our efficiency and improve our competency is just not play with these people at all because the likelihood that they're going to be shitty is just too risky. Like, it, it's like playing poker. It's like... These people are like a bad hand of cards. Just fold them and, you know, shuffle the deck, get a new get a new pair. And before it was, you could get a new pair of cards and you could check what everyone else's cards were. And maybe it's like, oh, maybe I want to play the hand, maybe I don't. But now you can't check what other people's cards are. You know, I think that's a pretty apt analogy there. It's just, um, it's sad. Because now I don't want to play with these people. Like, I just don't want to help them. It's not on the low tours at all. It's it's just not efficient for me anymore. It's not worth my time. When before, it could have been. And and it was in a lot of cases. So it's just unfortunate. I, I think this is going to be really bad for the game. All in all, this one update goes against what makes MVM the coordination-based game that it is. I firmly believe that the more that people publicize how they feel about this change and how negative it affects MVM, the more likely changes to happen in the next update. If you agreed with any of the points made in this video, I strongly urge you to share the video around, or at the very least, get a conversation started with your friends who play MVM, and spread the word publicly about how you feel, be it a post on the subreddit for TF2, or a YouTube video, or on social media. And remember, if you encounter a toxic person, it is up to you, the player, to decide whether or not to leave and re or to stay and play. And with that being said, I'll see you in the server.